If it's big, broken, we're gonna fix it on World's Toughest Fixes. I'm about to climb into the belly of that beast. There she is, ready into the seas. Where we're going to install a brand new, less costly power plant that will save Royal Caribbean millions. Woo, keep your hands inside the ride. We're both underway, we're gonna try to move up alongside, throw our gear in and jump on board. Hello, boat. Look at that. Day one, some 300 workers swarm onto the radiance of the seas. They'll work around the clock in 12-hour shifts for the next 20 days in some of the most dangerous conditions imaginable. Most of them head to spaces three levels below the ship's waterline to clear out room for the new power plant. This thing is the size of a city bus. It's really two machines in one. One side is like your car motor on steroids, a giant 15,000 horsepower engine, which drives the other side an electric generator. Together they crank out nearly 12,000 kilowatts of electricity. That's enough to light a small city. That engine has to fit into a space now crisscrossed by vital pipes and cables. These men have to cut, reroute, and weld up nearly every one of them. It is nasty, sweaty, hot conditions down here. Some of these are water pipes, some of them sewer pipes, some of them electrical. There's over two miles of piping to be rerouted around this room. That's why you can't do this overnight. It'll take days of 24-hour shifts to get this done. But this crew's next assignment is even tougher. They have to lift the engine three meters into the air so that they can slide it into the hole in the ship's hull. Meanwhile, in the engine room, men are racing to remove the last slab of hull. They need it off today or they fall behind. This ship sails in less than two weeks. Then, there's an unexpected setback. It's a pipe leak. Someone somewhere has accidentally opened a valve releasing wastewater. The water's not just dangerous to work in, it stinks. So we've run for the hole, basically. I'm gonna stay here by the open hole, try and get a breath. It's well into the next day before the crew finishes the bridge we'll use to move our huge engine into the ship. Now we need muscle, and lots of it. Fortunately, we have the modern beasts of burden to do the pulling for us, mechanical hoists. This is what's gonna supply the power to drag the engine into the ship. Pneumatic chain hoist. By shrinking the chain, they're gonna pull the engine all the way inside. We've attached a hoist to each side of the engine's base. Those two hoists working in unison will slowly drag it forward. Even so, it's gonna be like hauling a house up a driveway and into a garage that's barely big enough for it to fit in. And we'll need more than just muscle. We'll also need plenty of grease. It is crunch time. This is where the engine could get really stuck. It slides into the ship with just centimeters to spare. An hour later, it's within a meter of the back wall. This motor's almost all the way in. We have one more stroke to do. So I think I'm gonna get out of the way. We have been at this for 24 hours solid now, and I am beat up from the feet up, but we have got it within three feet of hitting the back wall. Talk about a fight. It was supposed to take only half a day, but after two new hoists and 16 hours of untold toil, sweat, and heartbreak, this cruise ship's massive new power plant is finally in place. The final days are a frenzy of activity. So the diesel generator has its blue cover off and it's just resting there in its new home beneath the waterline on the starboard side of the ship. All the workers have been racing overnight the last 24 hours to try to get the floor welded into place and move on to the next step, which can rebuild the wound in the side of the ship. The hull now glistens thanks to a brand new paint job. And inside, the workers have cleaned out most of the shipyard dust. Yeah, all of the uh, inspection teams and tests have been uh, completed. And this is the fastest you've ever done this job, isn't it? It is, yes, yeah. At one point, we fell almost a full day behind. But in the end, the crew of the Grand Bahama Shipyards beats the deadline, and they set a new record for this cruise ship fix. 